And I was in the White House talking. They had a committee. Everyone was scared. It's chitless about, sorry. Very scared about Y2K. <laughs> and I was in the White House talking by a um, conference call to the Pentagon. The Pentagon said, fine, all our computers are fine. Nothing's going to happen. You know they lost their computers for nine months up over the roll of nine months. They were replacing the computers and something went awry. So they totally lost them. So they lied to me. But, you know, there are times when things are so dangerous. 9-11. Um, hmm? They went to the second highest state of nuclear alert from DEFCON 6 to DEFCON 2. Why? Because they didn't know what was happening. They didn't know who'd flown into the World Trade Towers. Cheney was hiding in his underground shelter. Bush was flying all around America. No one was in charge. But they went automatically, and that's what they do. Stratcom Strategic Air Command in Nebraska um, went straight down to the second highest state of alert. And anything could have triggered, and they all go off together. You know, America's got 5,500 hydrogen bombs ready to go, and 1,000 is enough to, do, to, to, to destroy everything. There are two men in each missile silos, aged 19 to 21, each armed with a pistol, one to shoot the other if one shows signs of deviant behaviour. What if the deviant one shoots the normal one? They um, have two key locks 12 feet apart so one man can't turn both keys, but they worked out the entire string to one key, one man can turn both. Commanders of the Trident submarines, which have huge numbers of weapons on them, nuclear weapons, uh, they can launch a nuclear war without even communicating with the Pentagon. I mean, I can go through all the ways. I just don't know how we're still here. And if you want to find out more about this, read The New Nuclear Danger, which isn't here at the moment. Couldn't get it in, yeah. Yeah, you're a well-educated man, aren't you? Go on. What's your question? Suppose you wish you'd go. No, no, well, you might too. Yes. <laughs> 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 what? Some shoot the dog. And they say, right, Helen, you're right. We're wrong. We're going to say, everyone's going Who's we? Them. Who yeah. are they? Yeah, let's just say Who's them? Like everyone suddenly got together and went, oh, you know, we've yeah. been allowing our politicians to do the wrong thing for yeah. so long. and no, we, we, this is bad, we've yep. really got to stop it now. Yep. Save the world. What would you do, or what would be the best thing to do with the waste that we've got and all of the nuclear infrastructure that exists now? Mm. Look, people have been asking me that for 35 years, <laughs> and I've been asking the nuclear industry for 35 years, and they say, trust us, we're scientists, we'll find the answer to radioactive waste storage. And I say, well, that's like me saying to you, you've got a pancreatic cancer, you'll die in six months, and trust me, I'm a good doctor, in 20 years' time I'll find the cure, mm -hmm. by which time you'll be dead and buried. Mm -hmm. My only solution that I've come up with after all these years, and this is my other book I wrote a while ago, which has had a, got a lot of good stuff in it too, and it's in here. The nuclear weapons lab scientists are still there making new nuclear weapons. And I write about that in The New Nuclear Danger. <laughs> They're brilliant. Many of them have Asperger's. You know what Asperger's is? It's like autism, only they find it hard to have relationships with, they're absolutely brilliant, and they have relationships with their computer screens. They make the bombs. What we should do is um, close the lab, labs down in terms, this is Los Alamos and Lawrence Livermore, and say, okay, you've made all this waste, it's your responsibility now, you work out what to do with it. And they remind me a lot of doctors, you know, we never clean up our waste. We'll do an operation, leave the operation room in a filthy mess, walk out, and the nurses always clean up after us. So these people need to be given the responsibility of working out what to do. Do I think that they can do anything from a scientific or physics perspective? No. You said the question comes from, it's going to be my generation yep. and the generation mm -hmm. growing up underneath me yep. that are suddenly going to realise. And all others. And all mm -hmm. others, yes that this nuclear infrastructure is just failing around us. Yep. That's what we're leaving. That's the so legacy. We, so we can have these lights on. Yeah. We're not here. <laughs> and it is. Grandkids. Yeah. It's, it, it is. You know, I'm the car become an ecological fascist. I turn off every single light in the house, except where I am. 
I turn off all the switches at night, all the blinking, you know, VCRs and stuff. They suck up six percent of the electricity we currently use. They should use more computers and heater. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You know, it's great that they're developing plug-in cars now where, and this is in our roadmap, you can cover all the parking lots of America with solar panels, plug the cars in like a Prius, okay, charge up the battery, and at night you can plug the car into your house, it's called vehicle to grid, and power your house from the power that's come from the solar into the battery into the I mean, all sorts of developments are occurring now that are incredibly exciting. That's all in our study, which if you want a copy, um, I can actually send you the executive summary if you give me your email tonight, if you want, want to have a look at it. But it's about 170 pages long. It's a good study. Yeah. I do know that in New Zealand, they got the, uh, three, three new clean zones. Yep. They do not allow, the, not allow the American ships That's right. with the nuclear weapons on them to enter the waters. Yep. Created some problem, but they stubbornly this did. Yep. And now they are free to do so. But yep. no farm care, you know, we've got any store that you press buttons and, and, and yep. press store up. Are we safe to migrate to New Zealand? <laughs> are we what? <laughs> are we what? So did you move to New Zealand? I've often thought of it. And if power gets re-elected, I actually might. I think Helen Clark's magnificent. And I knew David Longy. He said, we refuse to sit in the dress circle of the nuclear theatre. Mm. He was wonderful. Mm. Remember the big demonstrations, Mary? And <coughs> all the, the nuclear submarines used to come in and all the thousands of little ships would surround them and a man got up on the submarine with a bucket of yellow paint to paint the submarine yellow, you know? <laughs> the yellow submarine. I mean, no, and the New Zealanders are magnificent. If only we had half the courage. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to have a lot of courage and move into a zone of discomfort. And I think it's inappropriate psychologically to be comfortable today. Because if we are, we're practicing what I call psychic numbing. We're blocking it out. And if we really <coughs> want our children and our grandchildren, really, then we can't be comfortable. That's why they took control of our medium. Yeah, well, 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 we'll get it back. It's, our, it's actually our country. Yeah. And they're our children. Yeah. And we've got a lot of guts. Yeah. I'll just end by saying this. During the Second World War, when the Americans were losing to the Japanese, they'd get into a foxhole and stick a digger's hat up on the stick to frighten the Japanese. Because we've got a lot of initiative and courage. <laughs> um, not as much as the New Zealanders at this point, but we can certainly develop it. And I'm talking to every single one of you. You can't come up to me and say thank you with stars in your eyes. Because that won't do it. What you do is you come up and say, my God, I'll read your book. I don't want to, but I will. And uh, I'll do something. And follow your instincts. You've got a good one. You've got a good one. There have been some good questions tonight. And it just comes out of you, you know? OK, you can have the last question. It's your fourth question. I think it might be more towards the pastor of the church. I think there's some more church. Matthew about this? I absolutely agree. Where are the churches? And it's not, I, well, let's, let's do all the uniting churches across Australia. I'll help you. Do you have a national conference once a year? Does the church? Every three years. Where's the next one? Where? When? In, uh, the next year, the year after. Well, call an emergency one. <laughs> <laughs> the Catholics, I mean, the Catholics at the moment are just out to lunch, I consider. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you're not out to lunch. But I'm talking about the priests and, you know, the people around the church. I mean, do you know that when George Bush went to see the Pope, the late Pope, do you know what the football is? The football is the case. If you watch the president, always walking just behind him is a man with the case, with the computer in it to start a nuclear war, okay? And sitting between their legs, as they sat opposite each other, talking was the football to blow up the creation. And I wonder if the Pope said anything to him. And then I always come back to say, and you start open with this, and I'll close with this, what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. That's all we need to ask ourselves. It makes me feel like weeping. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've got to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm.